Okay, so let's talk about driving a bit. Go slow to go fast. That's the number one thing. See, most people who pick up an RC car, the mistake they make is they go way too fast. They drive over their head. They take big risks. They brake too late or not at all. And the thing is that in RC, there's no risk of bodily harm. There's no self-preservation instinct involved. In full-scale motorsport, the problem with beginners is they go too slow. So they brake too early. They don't accelerate hard enough. Everything they do is typically geared towards going too slow because they don't have the courage or skills to go faster. But in RC, it's the opposite. We tend to go too fast, brake too late, jump too far, do everything just extreme. And that's not really the best way to learn. Not the best way for your wallet either. So just keep that in mind. Smooth is fast. Go slow to go fast. That's the first lesson. Most beginners out there, what they need to do is they need to brake a bit earlier and focus on maintaining their corner speed through a corner and stay on the racing line. So maybe first let's go and check out what the racing line actually looks like. Here we can see a track from above and we can follow how the cars do a lap around it. And as we start drawing the racing line, you notice that there aren't many sharp corners. It's quite round. So the drivers are opening up the corners a bit so that they can maintain more speed. It's a nice sort of flowing, fluid arc of a line. For example, this corner here, instead of doing two corners, it becomes one long corner. So by connecting the dots on the track in this way, where you try and draw a smooth arc around the track, you can maintain more speed. In the tight corners, you go very close to that inside of the corner, but even there you open it up a bit so that you can maintain more speed. Here you can see that the drivers, they try to make this chicane as straight as possible. Even though the track looks like it has a big corner, the cars just drive straight. And here you can see that they make a nice long arc instead of making it two corners so they can carry more speed into the jump section. Okay, so now that we've checked out the racing line, how do you stay on it and how do you go fast while following it? Well, now racing a car fast around the track, what we need to understand about cars is that it has suspension and it has load on all four tires. And as the car navigates the track, the load on each tire is changing and that affects the amount of grip the car has. So to be able to maintain a consistent, smooth arc around the corner and to be able to maintain predictable good grip, you need to drive the car relatively smoothly around the track. So your inputs need to be smooth. How you turn the wheel, how you get on the throttle, when you apply the brakes, you can't do everything at 100% maximum speed. You have to be smooth. I mean, when you drive a real car, if you drive a real car, how do, do you just, when you get to a 90 degree corner to, to turn into the parking lot, do you go like that with the steering wheel? Do you like slam on the throttle and the brake? No, you probably turn the wheel smooth and get on the throttle smooth. Same thing with an RC car, smooth is key. There's a scene in a movie that's good for this actually, it has nothing to do with the racing. It's a blind guy. Al Pacino plays a blind guy in uh, Scent of a Woman. Which way's the door? Are you blind? Are you blind? No, of course not. Then why do you keep grabbing my goddamn arm? I take your arm. So imagine your car is Al Pacino. He doesn't know where you want to go next. So if you are super aggressive and you just go in one direction, he might trip and fall over, right? He needs time to react. You need to let Al know where you're going. So you change direction smoothly and he will follow. He's holding onto your arm. He can sense that, oh, now we're going this way and he will adjust and he will move with you. So that's the idea. Introduce to the car the idea of turning, accelerating, jumping, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, you have to pretend that the car is blind and doesn't know what's happening. And you as a driver have to introduce the next obstacle or idea to it. Like, 
now we're gonna go straight now I, I'm about to want to turn left you know so be smooth and prepare the car let it know what's going to happen next and then you won't surprise the car and it won't surprise you by spinning out flipping over or getting offline now the next step is your inputs are smooth and you aren't always going full throttle full brake turning all the way they're also gradual so you can turn just a quarter of the way or halfway and if you need to turn more you turn more same with the throttle you you roll on the throttle and not always full throttle maybe you only need half in this section so you've learned to be smooth now the next step is to be consistent you need to repeat this lap after lap after lap and then how to improve from days when you are consistent then you can learn to brake a, a bit later carry a bit more speed around the corner accelerate sooner out of the corner but the, the first step really is to learn to be smooth learn to follow the racing line learn to do it consistently lap after lap and only then do you really begin to sort of build speed and lower your lap times um, well I should say lower your lap times more throughout this process af as you learn to follow the racing line you will be lowering your lap times but the focus there really isn't the lap time the focus is just getting around the track smoothly then once you do that consistently then the focus shifts to getting around the track smoothly faster and lowering your lap time so when you first start out the idea is just to go around the track just drive around the track middle of the track you know maybe cut inside on some corners you know simulating a racing line but the main point is just get around the track and clear the jumps if you're doing off-road so square up early for the jumps accelerate straight to the jump and learn timing the jumps that's really the first step then the second step is to do the same thing but start following more of a natural racing line so being closer to the pipes in the corners and not just driving around the sort of middle area of the track and then uh, the third part is doing that and doing it consistently so going out there and doing fi a five minute run trying to do that same thing over and over and over consistent lap times no mistakes following the racing line doing all the jumps then the fourth stage is doing that same thing but lowering your lap time so going faster on that same line braking later carrying more corner speed accelerating sooner out of the corner this is really the best way to progress as a driver so take it easy and take it step by step and main maintain control over what you're doing okay we already spoke about the racing line braking points carrying corner speed and the basic driving techniques of being smooth around the track but jumping that's a really important part of off-road and that's where most mistakes happen most people crash on the jumps there are a few techniques that I'd like to go over and some tips and then later on in this course we'll cover more advanced jumping techniques such as sort of breaking on the faces of jumps and whipping your car and and turning it before a corner if there's a jump before a corner those kind of things but now just the very basics this is the first lesson in, in driving so let's keep it simple I think one thing that I notice is I often can already tell before someone jumps if they're going to crash and that's because people have the tendency of just going for it so the car hasn't settled the car isn't straight yet they still think oh, I'm gonna make it and most of the time when they think that then they don't make it they end up crashing so tip number one make sure you get the car straight and you can accelerate in a smooth steady fashion in a straight line to the jump so if your speed is too low there's a jump out of a corner for example your car is a bit unsettled you get on the throttle really hard chances are the rear end is going to step out the car isn't going to accelerate in the direction you expect and you'll jump offline somehow and crash so calm down a bit before the jump 
make sure your car is straight and then accelerate towards the jump in a straight line. That's tip number one. Tip number two, don't just pin the throttle and hit the jump full throttle. The best way actually to jump is to accelerate on the face of the jump. So as you make sure that your car is angled correctly, you're on the throttle already. And then as you get closer to the jump, you increase the throttle so that your car is accelerating when you take off the jump. That's going to result in the sort of best curve for a jump. Your car is going to compress, the suspension is going to compress as you head up the jump face and then pop the car up over the jump. This isn't the fastest way to do a jump, but it is the safest and best way. That it's most likely that the car will jump in a nice arc over the jump. So, accelerate smoothly, line up your car straight to the jump, and remember that accelerating as you hit the jump is the best way to do a jump. When I say accelerating, I don't mean that you go slow and then right at the jump you start to accelerate. No, you're already heading at a good speed. It's just that you add a slight amount of throttle just before the jump so that the car slightly accelerates as it hits the jump face. So what then? You've taken off. As soon as the car takes off, you let go of the throttle. If you don't, the car will jump nose high. So when the car is in the air, if you get on the throttle or stay on the throttle, the nose will lift up. If you get on the brakes, the nose will drop down. This is how you control the attitude of the car in the air. So typically, let's say you've jumped the car and you let off the throttle. You're not doing anything now. You're not touching the controls. And you notice that the car jumped in a way where the nose is a bit high. It's not going to land nicely. It's going to land rear wheels first. If you just tap the brakes, it will bring the nose of the car down so that it will hopefully then match the angle of the landing. So tapping the brakes in the air brings the nose of the car down. If on the other hand, maybe you let off the throttle a bit too early and the car hadn't jumped yet. So if you do that, maybe the car will jump nose down. So you're going into a front flip. That's scary in motocross, I can tell you that much. That That's something we call an endo. You don't want to do that. Now, what you do then is you panic rev. Well, in RC, we just get on the throttle. Punch the throttle and that will bring the nose up. So if you go off a jump and the nose is too low, get on the throttle to lift the nose back up. This is enough for you to now start practicing jumping. You don't have to worry about steering yet. You don't have to worry about whips. Focus on taking off in a controlled manner, timing the jump so that you can hit the landing and angling the car with the throttle and the brake so that the angle of the car is the same as the landing so that you can land smoothly. I'll just briefly mention adjusting the side to side attitude of the car. So often the car doesn't jump perfectly horizontal. One side of the car is leaning lower than the other. To correct this, the thing to remember is turn towards the ground. So let's say your car takes off and the left side of the car is closer to the ground, then you turn left. If you turn left, that's going to level out the car. I'll show you right now. Okay, so if we imagine that you take off, you jump, and the car is at an angle, to level this out, you turn towards the ground. As you turn the, towards the ground, the car will level out. If you also ap apply some throttle when you turn towards the ground, it will do it more aggressively. Remember, you take off, you brake, it brings the nose down. You throttle, it lifts the nose up. You want to adjust the attitude of the car so it matches the landing. Also, when you jump, typically, the car doesn't always jump horizontally, which you want. In this situation, you could just get on the brakes a bit, bring the nose down, and land. But what if it jumps like this? Well, you always turn the wheels towards the ground. So in this case, 
you would turn left and the car would level out. If you get on the throttle, it does so more aggressively. If it's turned the other way, again, turn towards the ground. So you turn right, get on the throttle and the car levels out. Later on in the course, we'll go over more advanced driving techniques and jumping techniques, but these are the very basics. So pay attention before the jump, slow down, make sure that you're lined up correctly, gather speed, and make sure you are accelerating as you hit the jump. Right as you leave, you let go of the throttle. Then you adjust by lowering the nose with the brake or raising the nose with the throttle if needed. And if the car isn't horizontal, uh, viewing from the front or the back, then you turn towards the ground. Easy peasy, right? As your skills and confidence grows, your lap times are gonna come down. And every step of the way, remember that racing isn't about one fast lap. Racing is about the whole duration of the race. So consistency is key. While you may be able to do a hero lap, the more important thing is to be able to do many fast laps in a row for the whole run. That's who wins the race. So always remember to focus on consistency also when you practice.